you'd better make sure you don't miss any of those quick time events. But why do we hate quick time events? Who says we hate quick time events? Welcome into episode 19 of Quick Time Event, brought to you by Middle of Nowhere Gaming. I'm your host, Courtney Osborne, and today I'm joined by the one and only Strong Finch, Sean. Hello. And uh, the Brit without a nickname, Lucy. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have no idea. We need to, we really do need to come up with a nickname for everybody. Just make it like so I know. racist and British. Hermione? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> everybody just like walks away. <laughs> Courtney, shut up. Okay, so, anyways, uh, quick time event. We uh, typically keep these episodes as short as possible because we're all very long winded. Um, today, we're going to keep a timer going for 15 minutes for our discussion, and that discussion is going to be about the question that has been that has started a fire on the internet this this past weekend, um, and it's regarding the Order 1886. And the length it takes to complete the game, and then people arguing whether or not uh, a game's length length should determine its price. Uh, so we're going to argue that out. We're going to um, throw out points from both sides and uh, come to probably not a conclusion, but <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. And the clock starts. So, Lucy, should a game's length determine its price? Yes, for the most part. Why? Um, that is because I feel that if you're paying fifty pounds, or yeah, I'm English, um, or like sixty dollars in the US for a game which is only five hours long, I don't think that is good value for money. And there's like loads of people who argue over like, oh yeah, but you spend like sixty dollars on a meal, and that's less than five hours. So, <laughs> but no, I don't. I think you should. I think it should lower in price as things go smaller, unless it's something really, really good, like something like Uncharted. Because if Uncharted was five hours long, but it was really, really good, like ten out of tens, but I think that's okay. But as soon as you get more around like the good but not quite great area, I think it should really be longer. Um, one thing I would like to point out before moving on, and we probably should have brought it up before we started the timer, was the fact that uh, somebody did leak a full playthrough in quotes of the game uh, on YouTube this weekend, and it's totals up to be about a five and five and a half hours long for his playthrough. Which was explained to be a speed run of the game that he didn't take any time to do any col- to find any collectibles. He literally ran from checkpoint to checkpoint, um, and, and that's about five and a half hours. While many other people, uh, including the person a person at Forbes, uh, have been playing it, and they say it's anywhere between eight and twelve hours, and that you can only beat it in about five hours if you speed run it. And that also, uh, the five hour claim was argued against by the CEO, uh, of Ready at Dawn. He says that that's impossible, uh, to beat it in five hours. So while, uh, we may be, we may use this five hour mark as our, as, you know, our arguing point, what we're talking about, uh, we all understand that, that five hours is only from a few people online who are anonymous and, Things like, you know, we, we understand that it's, it's probably going to be longer than that. I would just like to point out, though, that I sort of don't 100% believe what that Ready of Dawn CEO said from the get-go when he said it was 8 to 12 hours long when someone has posted a Let's Play, which is 5 hours. So it's 5 hours to 12 hours, not 8 to 12 hours. Yes, but he's However, 8 to 12 is the average player is what the point is, not a speed run because you don't you never measure a game's length by speed runs. You know, uh, so you could speed run Skyrim in 10 hours. So are we to say Skyrim is a 10-hour game or a 10 to 500-hour game or anything? Like that? Typically you say Skyrim is like a 50-hour game when you describe it to people or a 50 to 100-hour game. Cuz that's the average. Yeah, I see your point. I, I'm looking on uh, Reddit as we speak, and there are reports that he didn't upload the full Let's Play, that the five to six hour mark is missing uh, several chapters that he has yet to upload, 
Yep. And then other people who have had their hands on the game say that it falls within the eight to twelve hours. Yeah. So uh, and that uh, that's a uh, like I said, the guy from Forbes also said the same thing that it's about eight to twelve hours. So like, and and that is and that is pretty standard for most linear uh, story driven games. Yep. You know, Uncharted, God of War, games like that. They are usually eight to twelve hours. Yeah. And you know, you're looking at it's a much different situation. You know, five and a half hours. I don't mind it. I I don't mind paying sixty dollars for it if it's a good story, good gameplay, marvelous graphics. You know, stuff like that. All those bullet points. You know, but take something like you know, Moat Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, oh, which yeah. really came under fire. After charging, what was it, uh, you know, $40-ish yeah. for what people say is roughly an hour or an hour and a half of main story gameplay. So, yeah. you know, I think using that measurement, you know, yes, a story's length should affect its price and vice versa. But at the same time, we – I think we're taking this situation and, you know, overblowing it a bit. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm i of the same opinion, Sean. Uh and I I kind of agree with what Lucy's saying as well is that you know a game's length is a factor, but it's not the entire argument. It's not the entire reason for price or or a game's worth. Like I, I've explained in the past on podcasts that I used to measure a game's worth by like. Uh, one dollar equals one hour. So if a game wasn't sixty hours, I wouldn't spend sixty dollars on it. Yeah, and I quickly learned that I was missing out on a bunch of really good games by doing that. And and so like you you really have to consider a, a whole facet uh, of reasons. Like like you were saying, the graphics are the graphics good? Is the story good? Is the gameplay fun? Because you know if if a if if we're gonna use a five and a half hour mark as our point, or if we're gonna use anywhere between you know, let's say six and twelve, let's go from from about the a little bit up from the speed run to about a, the longest you could probably play this a game like this, six to twelve hours. Other games that fall in that, Uncharted, the average time to beat that is nine hours. Uncharted two, eleven hours. Uncharted three, nine hours. God of War two, eleven hours. God of War three, nine and a half hours. Killzone 2, 8 hours. Killzone 3, 7 hours. Crisis 3, 7 hours. Bioshock Infinite, 12 hours. I beat all of those games in under their average time, and I would pay $60 for all of those games. You know, and those, those all fall in that same, uh, that 6 to 12 hour period. You know, that little bit of time. It's not super long, but it's not super short. So I, I just don't see how people are already claiming that it's not going to be worth their money when they haven't played it. They don't know how the story is. They don't know how beautiful the graphics are. They don't know how fun the gameplay is. But they're claiming that because it could be five and a half hours because one YouTuber said it was, they're not going to buy it because it's not worth their money. See, I think a lot of it is the vocal minority. Oh, yeah. Like, sort of blasting and also, out. And I think you just cut her off, Sean. Go on, Lucy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also, when you were saying that a dollar per hour, as you said, I personally don't think that. I think that any – I preferably like my games to be around the 20-hour mark. But yeah. That's also probably got a lot to do that I'm a lot younger than both of you, and I'm still in school. I probably have a lot more free time than you do. And also, it's the fact that I don't have a job and that I have a very limited amount of money to spend on video games. And oh, yeah. When I look at it, if I would, I'll just do this like all in dollars because it's easier. If I had like three hundred dollars to spend on video games and I bought like five AAA games and like some indie games, and they were five hours each, that's not that much really if you think about it over the whole year. Yeah. And also, I am a bit of an RPG player, so I do prefer the longer hours and the grinding and all that stuff. Yeah. See, and part of this argument. Uh or part of this topic, the, the idea we're talking about here is is very subjective. It's it's all about the player, uh, the specific player who's who's making their point. Because, uh, like you, I'm I'm more of a fan of JRPGs. Uh, I would much rather play a JRPG for 150 hours and 
that absolutely is worth my time. But you know, other games like I, I listed off those like nine or ten games there. Those are all under ten hours, or all about ten hours. And I, you know, I still think those are all worth the same amount to me. Um, and I just I find it. I find it a really strange argument when somebody can go on there and say that this game, that the Order 1886, isn't worth $60 because it takes the same amount of time as a game like Transistor, uh, which is an indie game, which didn't take nearly as long to develop or as many resources to develop. Uh, Just because it's the same length, that somehow puts them on the same uh, pedestal and they should be the same, they should cost the same amount. Uh, that is an outrageous, outlandish uh, argument because the Order 1886 cost so many millions of more more dollars to develop. You know, it's so expensive, and they they have been working to make it so pretty and so cinematic and all that stuff for so long that it would be stupid to charge fifteen dollars for this. That would not make any sense whatsoever. Another point that's coming up here. Um, and the reason why a lot of people are, you know, throwing a lot of fire at the order is the fact that one, it's single player only. Yep. So yeah. games like Charted Two and Uncharted Three that have a multiplayer component, you know, it has that replayability. And also, um, he said that the game has little to no replayability since you can't, you know, upgrade anything via New Game Plus. See, you can't really skip. That however, sense. that is so subjective as well because. Saying it has no replayability is only to him. A game like The Last right. of Us Remastered, I had all of the story trophies in the first, or or just The Last of Us. I had all the story trophies in the first playthrough, you know, all the collectibles, all that stuff. So therefore, it's not going to be worth it for me to replay it, right? That is absolutely wrong. I have replayed it five damn times because i love that game i love its story i love the the gameplay all that stuff so much that i want to keep replaying it that could be the case of this game you know him just because he wants collectibles or a new game plus that doesn't mean everybody does yeah like i know what you mean like with the legend of zelda link between worlds which came out november 2013 i've played that game like five times and I've like I've hundred percent completed it several times. Just that I love it so much that I play it again. And also on the point of replayability, I think that at the end of the day, people do pay the price that they feel it's worth. Because what I find is that either the games drop drastically in price. Yeah. For example, Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes is currently on Amazon, the Xbox One for ten pounds, which is wait if I just like google this what's that that's a that's like that's like 12 dollars yeah most of most of the time you can get it for about 10 or 12 dollars around here yeah yeah and also you have the whole thing of trading in because what i find especially is that like especially on like resellers as well they're like they'll beat the game in the weekend and they'll trade it into game or gamestop or best buy and it's Honestly, I feel like the studio gets the amount of money because then people buy used copies because they're cheaper and yeah. Um, okay, so a few more ideas I, I was coming across. Now. One of one of them was that the about the length using length as the only way of determining it. Still, uh, I, I I compared some of the games I've beat in the past and I, I picked out specific long games that I think compare in no way, shape, or form to the order. And that's like R. Tonelico, Quoga, Nell of RCL. That game is 40 hours long. And then Magna Carta 2, 40 hours long. Fairy Fencer F, 28 hours long. All those are obscure JRPGs with, you know, just girls with big tits and, uh, you know, they're skipping, uh, skipping a lot of development time by just repeating the same dungeon kind of things. Like it, it's just those games are all were all sixty dollars originally, you know. And how do you compare that to the order? Just because it's longer, that somehow means that those are worth it, and the order isn't. Like it's again, it's preference. It's about the kind of game, the gameplay you like, and stuff like that, rather than just its length. And we yeah. are looking, you know, as a gamer, and not, you know, what did the do the developers think about this? They poured their heart and soul into this game for what five years? Yeah, and um, to yeah. have people and to have people saying that 
it's not worth the asking price because, oh, some guy, you know, there's a rumor going around that some guy beat it in five hours. You know, maybe it is five hours, but you know what? They worked so hard on that five hours that they want to give people the best experience that they can with this yep. story. So, And uh, I kind of find this, uh, this, argue, this whole argument a little bit uh, funny because it was just in October last year where the internet was ablaze about how Alien Isolation was way too long, that you should probably play it for five or six hours, and then you should quit because that's all you need to know. That's all you need from the game. It's just like, really? And, but now we're on the opposite side of it because it's a different game? Like, I, I just don't see how this argument, you know, like has any ground. I just, I don't, I'm not of that opinion at whatsoever. If you don't want the game, then don't buy it, you know? Don't pre-order it. Wait until it drops in price, things like that. But don't start a shitstorm on Facebook about it. Okay, so the thing also with Alien Isolation, which you have to remember, is like, if I remember correctly, it was like on the start screen, it was like, oh yeah, which mode do you want to play? Easy, medium, or hard? It was like, oh yeah, you should play in hard mode. Yep. And I think that's what most people did, um, because it is quite a hard game already. Yes. And it's really challenging. People got frustrated, and it was... It was the autumn period, or fall as you guys call it, where there's so many games coming out. It's like you have to you jump from game to game to game to game to game and you barely manage to finish anything yep. unless you choose to solely focus on something like you did with Dragon Age Inquisition. And another thing about this is what Lucy said, the vocal minority. Go ahead and finish your point. It's just that you may have just a small group of people that want to say, you know, I want this in a video game. But you know what? Maybe the vast majority like our games five hours. Maybe the vast majority – and the vast majority will love the order for what it is. But you're always going to have somebody who's going to complain about it because they're the type of person who loves to complain. Yeah. Before wrapping this up, to finish off your point, like – the vast majority of people will probably enjoy it and they won't say anything. We're probably going to see record sales. You know, we're probably going to see a story about, oh, fastest selling new IP on PlayStation 4, or oh, it sold a million copies in its first weekend, or, you know, things like that. And it's going to be like, okay, so people didn't care. You know? It probably is going to be the fastest selling new IP on yeah. PlayStation 4 since it's one the of the only ones. <laughs> yeah, it's no, literally the only one so far that's come out besides Snack. And oh. that was launch, and it wasn't appealing really to the core PlayStation demographic. And dra- or in Drive Club or whatever, right? Oh, and Drive. Oh yeah, Drive Club was <laughs> oh, obviously yeah, that, the best launch. That game existed. I forgot about that. <laughs> but anyways, okay, that wraps up episode 19 of Quick Time Event. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you have any uh, questions for the Mong podcast, you can or any topics for Quick Time Event, you can email us at contact.mong at gmail.com. You can find our Twitter account at mong.com, all spelled out. And you can find us on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash mong network. And then, uh, of course, you should also go subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Mong Plays, uh, where we're going to be uploading a bunch of Let's Play videos. We already have two up there and several of our old archived on there, our Is old Mario videos. Mario Kart 8 up there? Yep, Mario Kart, Mario-, 8. Oh. Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8's up. Yeah, Mario Kart 8's up there and iDarb is up there. And we have Super Smash Bros. coming and Volgar the Viking and um, Apotheon and... Let's see, Worms, Battlegrounds, and there's there's a bunch of them coming. Um, and then make sure to check out Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram by just by uh, searching for Middle of Nowhere Gaming on each of them. And then the website is middleofnowheregaming.com where you can find all of our latest editorials, features, news, reviews, podcasts, and all the other good stuff. And then you could find us all on Twitter. You could find me at Osborne underscore 2009. You could find Sean at Little Big Ham. And you could find Lucy at Blue Fox 2 triple O. Right on. <laughs> Mong? Mong. Mong.